Chapter 6, Section 2, Solving Systems by Substitution. Today you're going to learn the second method of solving systems of equation, and this one is called substitution. Sometimes whenever you graph a solution or graph a line, you're not going to be able to tell exactly where the lines cross either because of an error in graphing or because the solution is not a perfect ordered pair. It's not whole numbers. So we can use substitution as another method to solving equations. So the goal when we substitute is to get one of the equations down to only one variable. We want to isolate one variable, then substitute and solve. So these five steps are very detailed in what you might follow to solve a system using substitution. On the next slide, I kind of condense these steps a little bit, so use whatever works for you. So in step one, we would isolate one variable. Does not matter if you're isolating x or y, and you can choose. So first we isolate, then we substitute into the other equation. Then we solve so that we have one variable solved for. Then we substitute again. So when you're using substitution, you actually substitute twice. You substitute and get variable number two. And then you write your answer as an ordered pair. And this um, right down here is just a a mnemonic, uh, an acronym to hopefully help you remember the steps to solving by substituting. So let's try some problems. Here we've got y equals 3x and y equals x minus 2. Now in both of these, y is already isolated. Okay, so we've got equation 1 and equation 2. So since y and 3x are equal, I can take this 3x and put it in for y in my other equation. Okay, so I'm going to, instead of having y equals x minus 2, y actually equals 3x. And if two things are equal, then that means that I can put one in for the other. So now I've got 3x equals x minus 2. A simple equation you've solved once like these 100 times. I'm going to combine my like terms. 2x is negative 2, so x is negative 1. Now if you are a visual person, this is where I would have highlighters handy because I would highlight this solution. This is what x equals. Now our next step is to take what we got for x and substitute it back into one of these equations. All right, it does not matter which equation you substitute into. Um, pick the one that you think is going to be easiest. So I'm going to substitute x in right here. Okay, so y is negative 3. So I've got x equals negative 1 and y equals negative 3. My last step is to write it as an ordered pair. You always write your answers as ordered pairs when you're solving systems. Always. So here, um, we have, here's a new problem, we have y already isolated. So that means that we can take this part of the expression and put it in right here for this y, okay? So I'm gonna have 4x plus x plus one equals 6. I have substituted because this right here used to be y, but since y equals x plus 1, I can switch them out for each other. So I have 5x plus 1 equals 6, 5x equals 4, I'm sorry, not 4, 5x equals 5, so x is 1. If x is 1, y equals x plus 1, or 1 plus 1, so y is 2. 
So this is my ordered pair. This is my solution. One, two. The third kind, I don't, I'm not starting with anything already isolated. So I need to isolate something from these two equations. Now you can pick what you want to isolate. I would pick whatever looks easiest to isolate personally. Um, so I'm going to go with equation number two, x minus y equals five. I'm actually going to move y to the other side and I end up with x equals five plus y. I did that because I, now I've gotten rid of a negative sign. I'm doing just the shortest amount of steps possible. So x equals five plus y. That means that I can take this and plug it in right here. Since this is the equation that turned into this, I can't substitute back into this one. I have to substitute into the other one. So my new equation, five plus y, which equals x, plus two y is negative one. So five plus three y is negative one. Three y is negative six. So y is negative two. Now I found y, I need to substitute that back in somewhere in order to find x. So I'm going to put it into, it doesn't matter which equation you use, just make sure you use one of these original ones up here. So x plus 2 times negative 2 is negative 1. x minus 4 is negative 1 plus 4. So x is 3. So my final answer is 3, negative 2. Because x is 3 and y is negative 2. Now here come three quiz questions. We just did three different kinds of problems. So each quiz question is one of each of those three kinds of problems. So go back if you need to, otherwise here they come. Solve this system using substitution. Please make sure you're actually using substitution because on a test and on a quiz, you will have to show me the steps for substitution. Yes, you can check it on your calculator. You can check it using another method, but you must show me substitution on a test or a quiz. So practice that now, please. Quiz question number two. And number three. Sometimes we're going to end up substituting in for variable that has a coefficient in front of it. And if that's the case, we are going to need to use the distributive property. I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a second. Take a minute to read this caution statement down here. I covered it just a minute ago when I said that you had to substitute into the other equation. Um, you don't want to substitute into the equation you just solved. So I've got my two equations right here. <clears throat> and I'm going to choose to isolate y because that's what's easiest to isolate. What's easiest to isolate is something that does not already have a coefficient. So if I have y plus 6x equals 11, and I'm solving for y, I would subtract 6x, and I end up with y equals 11 minus 6x. So now I'm going to take this expression and put it in for this y. So I have 3x plus 2 times 11 minus 6x equals negative 5. I put it in another color so you can see that this expression is what's going in for y. And so it needs to go into parentheses right here. This is what the slide before this was saying. Your next step when solving is to um, distribute and then solve for x. So I've got 3x 
plus 22 minus 12x is negative 5. Combine like terms. Negative 9x plus 22 is... is negative 5. Subtract 22. Negative 9x is negative 27. So x is 3. All that work and all I've found so far is x. Now I'm going to put this x equals 3 back into one of these original equations. So if x is 3, then y plus 6 times 3 is 11. y plus 18 is 11, so y equals negative 7. And my final answer, ordered pair, is 3 comma negative 7. And this is my answer. So you have a quiz question coming up. It's just like this problem. So take a second to review this, and then uh, keep watching to see quiz question number 4. Here it comes. Solve this using substitution. So we've got Jenna, and she is deciding between two different cell phone plans. The first plan, I'm going to underline these details in red, has a $50 sign-up fee and costs her $20 a month. The second plan has a $30 sign-up fee but costs a little bit more at $25 per month. After how many months will the total cost be the same? What will those costs be? If Jenna has to sign a one-year contract, which plan will be cheaper? We have got quite a few things to do in this problem. The first thing that we need to do is write equations. So plan number one, I would write the equation as y equals 20x plus 50 because there's a one-time fee of $50 and it costs her $20 for every month. So X is going to stand for the number of months that she's using this plan. Plan two, the total cost is going to be $25 per month but plus 30, a $30 sign-up fee. After how many months will the total cost be the same? So it's asking us how many months will plan one equal plan two. So I would set it up to make plan one equal to plan two. And it's asking how many months. Well, x is the number of months, so x is the variable that I want to solve for. I'm going to combine my variables. So 50 is 5x plus 30. And then I'm going to subtract 30 from both sides and I get 20 is 5x or x is 4. So after 4 months, the costs are going to be the same. The next question asks what will those costs be? Well. The cost is represented by y. So after four months have gone by, when x equals four, what is y? And I would put that into either equation. y equals 80 plus 50 or 130. So after four months, that's the answer to the first question, the plans will cost $130. That's how much total she would have spent for each of those cell phone companies. The last question asks if Jenna has to sign a one-year contract, which plan will be cheaper? So one year, remember that X stands for the number of months. So if I'm looking for one year, I'm going to put the number 12 in for X, okay? I'm going to erase to make some room, and then we'll uh, solve that last part. Alright, so if I look at plan one, 
I'm looking for the cost of plan one after 12 months. Equals 240 plus 50, which is 290. So after 12 months, plan one is gonna cost her $290. Let's look at plan two. 25 times 12 plus $50. 25 times 12 is 300 plus 50 would be $350. So plan one is the cheaper plan for a one year contract. Okay, for a one year contract. So now it's your turn to give it a try. I want you to pause the video, screenshot this, send it to Notability, or work it out in your notes. But you give this a try because a quiz question is coming up after this. All right, so here's your solution. Here are my two equations that I wrote for plan one and plan two. Then I set them equal to each other. I substituted. Um, I found that x is 10. So after 10 months, that's the point at which the plans will cost the same. Um, at 10 months, it will cost $860. But if you plan to move in six months, plan one is gonna cost you $540 and plan two is gonna cost you $580. Therefore, plan one is the cheaper one because it costs you $40 less. All right, and here's your quiz question. Be sure that you answer every part of the question and pay attention to your answer choices.